He's taking us down to uh, check out all the cool stuff he's got on his property here. 700 pounds, million and a half. Oh wow. Oh, this is impressive. So basically I'll give you the, uh, the five minute tour here. Sounds good. All right, you're looking at a uh, fairly significant section of my generating uh, capacity. This generates all of my energy. This is cooking gas, heating gas, fuel for my vehicle, all my energy needs. Awesome. So anything that can be done with fossil fuel can be done with hydrogen. Uh, the house has been running for going on five years now with almost no maintenance whatsoever. Just changing the filters out. The solar system itself is pretty much maintenance free. Well, the solar panel, that, that whole process of creating the hydrogen, it's essentially splitting water with water molecules. Into, right? into its base right. elements, H2O. 80% okay. right. of every molecule in the universe is hydrogen. All right, two thirds of the planet here is water. Right. Hydrogen isn't found naturally in the environment, so we have to split it, and it takes energy to split it. And that's what the solar is for. And that's what the solar is for. The right. problem with renewable energy is that, you know, you can't you can't store it. You know, the, if you there's tons of stories that you know the windmills and solar systems are shutting down do because so well no because the grid can't accept it. All right, and batteries are big, they're expensive, they're heavy, and they only last five years, right. and they're not good in different environments. Hydrogen is forever. There's no shelf life. It's as good today as it'll be a hundred million years from now. If you have a leak with hydrogen, it's safer than any fuel we currently know. 45 miles an hour in outer space. Hydrogen and helium are the only two gases that leave the planet. Now this kind of, I guess, like almost a closed loop system. You this is a closed here. loop system. And the energy here, when I need it, the months that my solar system won't keep up is December, January, February, and part of March. Okay? In those months, I siphon off the hydrogen that I stored April, May, and June, and part of July, and I run it through the fuel cell in the dead of winter when the, my panels are covered with snow and I generate electricity, heat, and chemically pure water. Water just now, that's one of the awesome byproducts of using the hydrogen to create energy is, is the only waste product is clean water. Well, you gotta understand, nothing gets consumed in this system, all right? And nothing gets transported. So basically, the water we start with is the water we end with. So we keep reusing the water. So the water, we're, we, we use the water to make the hydrogen. All right, when we make the hydrogen in, we get the water back. We run it back through the electrolyzer again, so it's a continuous loop. So this is, so this is a self-sustaining system. hypothetically hook this up to like a rainwater catchment and then have clean water year -round. Absolutely. I tried to reuse everything I could in this system or use stuff that was stock in order to keep the prices down. These are used propane tanks, basically 1969 vintage. Really? Yeah, and wow. since they have hydrogen in them, there's no degradation of the tank and propane doesn't degradate the tank either. Right. So these are just recycled tanks. Wow. And if I need more storage, I just add more. So you're looking at 45 days worth of storage here. Uh, the technology now, this was done almost five years ago, the technology now is high pressure. So I can take all of these tanks and put them into a space that's one tank, six foot long, two foot in diameter store the same amount of hydrogen, really? 5,000 pounds instead of 200. Yeah. This is the way we're going to save this planet. But it takes a huge mindset. I mean, right now, this is very disruptive technology. How do you tax free? You know, the, the, the people the that, powers be, that be, the powers that be are making yeah. too much money over the existing yeah. system to want to change it, no matter how good it is for the planet. That's crazy. You know, That's when crazy. a military goes to war, there's things called acceptable casualties. Right. One of those acceptable casualties is my, my son or daughter, or, or you know, your, your, uh, your relatives, it's not acceptable. Yeah. This on either renewable side. Energy, on either side. On either side. Yeah. Renewable energy is homeland security. Now, I don't know how comfortable you are saying this on camera, but I would like, since we're taking kind of an activist stance with our website, you'd mentioned in Maniunk that you've even received, what, death threats oh, for well, this technology? Kind, yeah. Absolutely. From utilities companies and things yeah, and such. People who have monopolies. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. It's insane. And I've, we've come across other people that are making big leaps forward in the green revolution. Well, I, like I mean, I mean, picture, picture having a... Thing. Picture having a holistic cure for cancer, right. and you're about to release it free to the world. There'll be a hit on you by the drug I companies. Mean, you're not going to last second, ten minutes. In a second. So life means nothing against the almighty dollar. Right. I mean, you know, you talk about conspiracy theories. You know, this is just logic and yeah. human nature. And you look what's happened in the past. 
You know, why do we go to war with other countries? We want their natural resources. Yep. You know, there, there was no weapons of mass destruction in the last war. It was a war over oil. It's controlling the resources, putting our people in place. The fuel cell you can see here is at the end. And the fuel cell, basically, it's an outdoor unit. Can you see it right here? It's connected to the tanks. There's an underground pipeline. Okay. All right, and this is a push-pull system. The electrolyzer pushes into the tanks, and the fuel cell takes it back out okay. of the same. And it's all automated, so I don't have to do anything. Okay. And I'll actually give you a demonstration on how all that works. Right. Okay. And this technology is adaptable to everything. Boats, cars, planes, you know, anything you can think of. And you can burn hydrogen in appliances, cooking gas, heating gas, uh, you know, whatever you can burn, you know, whatever you burn, you know, fossil fuel for, you can burn hydrogen. And the nice thing about hydrogen, there's no carbon in it. So no CO2, no HC, no NOx. It burns a little hotter too. Well, you're going to get to see that. But yeah. yeah, when you burn hydrogen, you get water. Right. So but that's the emission. So you can burn this inside with no venting. Right. And you get 100% of the heat because you don't have to vent 50 you know, 20 to 50 percent out the stack. Right. Unbelievable. But this is a very radical way of thinking. This is very disruptive. But it's the right thing to it do. It is the right thing to do. The right yeah. thing to do. This is the unit here that splits hydrogen and oxygen from the excess solar. Right now we're putting out 193 pounds. And my tanks are 171, so I'm almost full. So this unit just sits there and it takes chemically pure water. There's a reverse osmosis and DI that comes from the well. So it, split, it puts that water into this machine. This machine splits it. Oxygen goes off. Uh, actually, I actually think I got the oxygen here. Yeah, this is pure oxygen out. Oh, yeah? Okay, yeah, you can smell it. <laughs> That's 100% pure oxygen. This is medical grade oxygen. Ah, that's good oxygen. So I can have a little oxygen bar here. Yeah, right? <laughs> I think but that would be good in hospitals. I was going to say in hospitals. Yeah. So if you use one of the hydrants and stuff for disaster relief, you can provide medical grade to the hospital. Water and oxygen. Yeah. And or you'll be all good to go 20 years from now when the world's completely polluted. You'll have fresh oxygen in your house. <laughs> Fuel cells here, you can feel how warm it is. So the, the heat from this heats the building. So excess heat. Goes to heat the building. We use the water again. We can remake more hydrogen. You know, put it right back into yeah. the electrolyzer again. And then this generates electricity. Here's the inverter in here that feeds it all back. Huh. Wow. So this is a continuous loop. Yeah. You know, no propane truck, no gasoline trucks. Nothing gets delivered, and nothing gets consumed except for the sunlight. No sunlight, we're all dead. So this is all being charged off the of solar. So I have a fuel cell drop and it drops right in. This is burning at 10,000 degrees. I'll shut the lights off. 10,000 degrees? Yeah, propane burns around too. That natural gas. You can feel the tremendous heat that gives. You won't be waiting a half hour to cook my bacon with that. No. No, and now that's actually glowing stainless steel, and you see the vapor that's going across the top? That's actually creating water. 